and for us in ACN, our core position is ETR. It's not really, it's not really the uh, regional director, uh, RVP. No, our core position is ETR. So if we can get to the point where we become ETR producing machines, then we we would have been we've done our job. We can then leave those individuals to now move on to start producing their own ETRs. That's really the purpose of this training for this afternoon. I know I'm not going to be saying anything new that you've not, not heard before, but then that's how our industry is. Nobody's ever really coming up with something new. It's always just a reminder of things, information that we already know, but sometimes, for one reason or another, we just switch off. But then the whole purpose of continuous education in any industry is that you keep educating yourself, you keep listening to the same information over and over and over and over, and it becomes second nature. So the next time you pick up the phone to invite somebody, you think about what Sarah just covered this afternoon. You think you pick up some key information there, and you say, "Hey, right, that's what did she say? Oh my goodness, when when was the last time that I actually covered this information? It was some time ago, but now you just picked it up. You just use it for your next phone call. It may even prompt you to just pick up the phone and call the next person. So number one thing that somebody that has really just seeing our opportunities to get them to change or begin to look at what kind of mindset that they have. That mindset we know is totally different from the one that they are currently used to. The mindset of an employee, the mindset of a, uh, of a sole trader, the mindset of a shopkeeper is totally different from the mindset that we develop in, in multi-level marketing in general specifically in acn a lot of people come in they think well this thing is too difficult after they don't give it their full um uh time and effort because they haven't they're still of the old mindset they fail to sort of realize that hang on i really need a change i need a kind of a brain transplant in a way i need to move away from my hands to my apps. Those automatic negative uh, beliefs to automatic positive beliefs. These are the kind of mindsets we're talking about. And one of those mindsets is the reason why you do anything. If, we, if I got up this morning and, my, and I didn't have to think about paying my mortgage, guess what? I wouldn't have gone to work. If I didn't have a reason, if I didn't think about uh, the family back home or me, my next holiday, I wouldn't go to work. Well, but unfortunately, a lot of people actually go to work. If you remember, with, uh, I can't remember it was Jim Rohn uh, that we were listening to, where, where he interviewed a lot of people. Why do you actually go to work? A lot of people just say, well, I go because everybody else is going to work. That's the reason why they go. That's it. They just go because everybody says, well, you go to university, you finish, you go to work, you have a job. They don't sit back to think about why is it that they're actually going to work. But you and I now know we have to have a reason why. And that is really very, very essential for somebody who has just seen this opportunity to get into that mindset to really focus on why is it they're trying to do join ACN because we know that when the reason is not strong enough they will not last so <clears throat> we got a few reasons why somebody uh, mindset that people need to adapt of course the first one is that they need to make a decision having really thought about why they need to make a decision now Sometimes we say not making a decision is still making a decision, which is true. But you have to make a positive decision and say, wow, I think I've really 
found out something. This is a reason why I need to do something. Now, from this day, I've made that decision that I'm going to change. I'm going to do something about this situation. Some people just wallow in the in where they are and they never think about what yeah, can things be different. But what they don't recognize is that they, they have not actually come to the point where they make that real decision and say, I, go, I want to change something in my life. Now, once you've made the decision, you've got to understand that everything is a learning curve. You cannot come in day one and become top producing like some of our leaders here. No, it's always, it's the learning curve. You always start from zero. And the fantastic thing about our specific industry is the fact that everybody starts from zero. So you start to learn and grow gradually. But this is, these are things that the new people need to understand that they cannot come in day one and become so good because what happened to me was as soon as I started inviting a few people and people started knocking me back, I gave up. And I did nothing. I was qualified to seek you and I spent for ever and ever to become ETL. Because I didn't think about this learning curve thing. I thought that, well, I'm good enough. I'm an engineer, so come on, all engineers are good, right? Wrong. Okay. Of course, this issue of emotional roller coaster, I didn't really get that one at the beginning either. Because I had at the back of my mind that my elder brother, he was so good at marketing. The only reason I was silently called him and he's going to the two of us, I would blow this business out of of the water. And guess what? When I called him in all my excitement, he said, "Uh, I'm not interested. I don't know what you're talking about. And to to date, he's never done. But guess what? He's my customer. I was so knocked back when he said that to me because I knew he's so good at marketing. He can market anything. I didn't know that you will get some ups and downs. But today, I love him. Just for being my customer. I now understand that, yeah, there were good days, there were bad days. When the good ones come, I celebrate. When the bad one comes, I still learn to celebrate in a way. As Prof. Duro always say, you go and sit in the car quietly, wind up your glass, and shout so that you make a lot of noise quietly. After that, you can then drive off calmly. Love the person anyway. That is actually all part of developing this what we call, uh, uh, I would say, the right mental attitude. We've given, in fact, during the training, uh, one of the best example that uh, Prof. Juru gave was the A hostess. When when you're traveling and they come to you and they say, "Hey, do you need some? Need a drink?" Or some water. When you said no, what does the air hostess do? Does do they sort of stand back to you and say, "Hey, how dare you refuse my water?" Goodness, I've had to travel all the way from this thing fly. I fly ten thousand miles every day, and I, my job is to give you water to drink. How dare you refuse it? No, they just walk to the next person and say, "Hey, would you like some water?" So we have to have the right mental attitude, and above all have a long-term thinking mind that it's not, we're not going to achieve success overnight. It's going to take some time. And the sooner the new person that just joined your team builds these things, have build this into their psyche, they will know that, well, you know what? There's a 10,000 no's limit. And guess what? I said that to somebody just, just of recent. And they said no to me. I said, wow, <laughs> well done. You just made me tick my word. I don't, just added another number to my, uh, my goal is to hit 10,000. By the time I hit 10,000, I'll be successful. They didn't understand what I meant. Yeah. Of course, if you have a long-term thinking, then you will never quit, would you? Because all the things we've just gone through, it means you just take them in your stride. 
is just another person. And we are so lucky that we have a fantastic support system in this industry. That people are there ready to help you all the way from the top. Can you imagine how the training that Vash Bari gave us the other day? He said, give, him his, give me a number. He'll call for you. Now, how many industries can you really find people like that? Saying to the person right down there, that give me a number and I'll call it for you. Because, see, because you're afraid to call that number. You're, called, you're afraid to call that person. There's somebody there. And he has, he has absolutely nothing to gain from most of us. But yet, he's there. That just gives tells you the support system that we have, the industry that we are in. So the next thing that the person really needs to get into is the compensation plan. Now, what I found is a lot of people, they're still not sure about, they come into AC and they probably get the headlines about making money. But they don't really fully understand the compensation plan of ACN. I know this from experience. But it's really critical that we get them to understand the compensation plan of ACN. Because that is the only thing that's going to drive them forward. If they know what, yeah, you have your goal, you've got your reason why. Rather than keep thinking, wow, that means I'll be paying 25 pounds, uh, 30 or uh, 29.99 every month. Am I going to be able to make enough to pay this to 9.99 every month? Now, you head back to the compensation plan. And they say, wow, 75 pounds within your first 30 days. Hmm, okay. 75 pounds, so minus 9.99. I'm making a profit, whatever the case, right? So if you can get to the next position, which we try to get them to, which is executive team leader, if they can do that within the first 30 days, guess what? It means they are now in a position to cover that $29.99 and still have a profit every month. Because each time they bring one person in, they're earning £40. So they will never ever go without or they will be in a negative position ever. Right? Now, if they actually hit some of the bonuses that we have on the table, it means they really cover for the next few months. So that is the reason why it's really important that during the early stages stages of somebody, new person joining our team, they have and they don't have to know the full details of it. They don't need to know how to get to SVP. No. They just need to know how to get to ETF. That's it. So what do they have to do to qualify? For this month, there's two services and five points. Two services, five points. Now, we are lucky we have Truvi, which can give you seven points. And by the way, seven points, you go to platinum, you get seven points. You don't have to go to platinum plus to get the seven points, by the way. So, if you are just a fairly regular tra traveler, you can go for the platinum. You don't have to go to platinum plus. That's seven points already. One SIM card. Two points. That's how many? Nine points. Right? Now, imagine you bring two people and they do exactly the same thing. And another thing that people don't really usually understand is these things are part of our business. It's a business. It's, for me, it's a business cost. If we can get the new person to understand, to rather than focus on the outlay now, they look at, if I was driving a car and my engine knocked off, am I going to, and I drive to work every day, would I really just park the car and say, hey, that's the end. I'm not going to work anymore. That's the, the honest thing, question that you can really ask me. What would you do? You would say, well, if I had to borrow the money, I would borrow it because I, need, I know I need to keep going to work, right? So, if I had to borrow the money and buy two of it again, use it to demonstrate the power of Truvi, then I would go for it. 
and that's why I bought to it from day one. I went for, I, actually I went for the for the top one. I didn't realize that I don't really need the top because I'm not like to travel more than about a couple of times this year. Then I looked at the score and I realized that with platinum I could still get seven points. Oh, no, so I dropped down to platinum. That's fantastic. See get my seven points. So that is all really the new person needs to know because they need 10, uh, 15 points minimum from that downline. And if they did that, they would get the 300 pounds within that first 30 days. With each person just bringing, two people bringing just 10 points each. One true V, okay, it would be nine points. True V, one true V, one, uh, one SIM card. One true V, one SIM card. Well, you can just get another SIM card, maybe for your business. One point with a 9.99, you still get one point. I'll give you a 10 points. So you switch your main phone, then one one SIM card for your business, even at 9 they'll give you one point. So that's 10 points for each, each team. That's how easy it is. So, of course, when that happens, the, the, what they're now learning is the power of duplication. And that duplication comes with understanding that the business is really not all about them. Success in ASEAN is not just down to you the individual. You've got to learn to be able to detach yourself and deflect everything from you. It's like, like a, table, a table tennis. Every time the ball comes, you hit it away. Hit it away. Keep hitting it towards somebody else. Okay. Who's that person? Well, we always have contact with our prospects. The prospect knows you. Rather than me always trying to explain everything, it's always very tempting to say, but I mean, I never knew this from very, very onset. Spent a lot of time thinking that I'm so good at this. I'm so good. I'm brilliant. I'm an engineer. I can explain everything. I know the information. So why should I pass it to somebody else to explain this, the same thing that I know already? I never understood the power of the support team. Now I do. When people ask me questions, I say, hey, I tell you what, that's a very, very good question. I know my one knows who has all the answers. Let me connect you to them. Okay? And that person is your expert. And I always say the expert is not necessarily always the, the regional vice president or the RD. The expert can be just about anybody. We become experts for each other. Of course, it's good if you can call, can readily call on your, uh, your RVP or your RD. But if they are not available, don't wait until, don't miss the occasion. Call on the next person that's available to you. Let them become the expert. All you have to do is edify the expert that person. Your prospect does not know them. They don't know that I'm just another, just an engineer, I'm just an ETL. They don't know any of that. You don't need to use the word ETL, no. When you edify them, you just talk about the person. You don't talk about the business. You give them that trust. So that person, they, you respect them already. But guess what? That means their prospect will also respect them based on what you tell them. It's not how much they know. If you're talking about how big they are, how good they are in ACN, they will think they're just trying to bring them into the business. They wouldn't, they wouldn't buy it. Okay? So that is why it's important for the new person to learn how to use the support team. And of course, it's really launching their business. It's I don't know. It's difficult to overemphasize this because most of the time people don't realize that until you've actually booked a meeting, you cannot start inviting. Because when you're inviting, it's going everywhere. You are saying to yourself, "Hang on, when am I? Which meeting?" 
Where am I inviting these people to? Because when, if you follow up what Sarah some stuff that Sarah was talking about, when you're inviting somebody, give them two days, two times. You call somebody, you probably find out, first of all, are you free at five o'clock or at 4.45 or at nine o'clock? They will think, well, I mean, I cannot say I'm not free both times. I might say I'm free at five, 4.45. Couldn't even give them two days. Now, they've told that they are free at that time. Before you get into the invite process, you've already set your Zoom times, your meeting times, before you start making the phone call. So when you are calling them, you when you call somebody, hey, are you free at this time? Yes, I am free. What's up? Hey, if I send, I mean, something is cooking, you've just got to be there. Now, this one at this time and this the one at this time, which which would you prefer? Of course, the list. People always say, well, I don't know, I don't know that many people. I don't know that many people. But what we've actually learned and realized is that the people that take you to ETL are very rarely the same people that are going to take you to RC or even RD. You can check with the leaders that are here present. Most of them will say only a fraction of those people usually remain in their team. What does that really tell us? It means that whatever list you have, that's just some way to get started. We've heard about, we, we, we learned about tap routing on, on Saturday. We've heard about tap routing all the time. What this simply means is the moment that one person that you invited, from that one person, you're going to start building a list. If something just happened to me uh, yesterday. You know, I'm just going to mention this. I invited one person. From that person, I got a list. From their list, they gave me another list. I invited, uh, or they introduced to one person, to person number three. From person number three, they came with their own list. I invited them. They introduced me to person number four. Guess what? Person number four, after about six months, they said no to the business. Yesterday, I discovered that person my first acting my sister-in-law. They didn't know. They didn't know me. And I didn't know them. Does that make sense? So four levels deep, I found I came across my sister-in-law. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it just give, goes to show the importance of this list and not leaving people out. It does not matter where in the world those people are, but the reality is when. They currently travel. When they come back, there's a bigger chance that they will take a look at more on a, at a more positive note at what I'm doing and probably think more about giving me a service or maybe rethinking their original decision of saying no to me. That's a, that's a reality. They may say say no, but it wouldn't really matter too much. So, of course, from that list, we, I'm not going to talk anything on that because we've already just gone through the invite. All the possible ways of inviting. Of course, the next thing is enrolling in the system of ACN. When the person's really been to a presentation, you invite them, they've been to a presentation. I, again, we've heard this so many times. I would never really let slip of, yeah, what do you think about what it just saw. I thought that was really fantastic. What did you think about it? No. What did you like best about what you saw? Did you see an opportunity for yourself? Well, all these things are just questions, right? You know, I don't know if anybody's following, um, is it Alf, uh, is it the Australian guy? He sends out, if anybody who did register for his uh, training, for his <coughs> daily updates. What he sent through yesterday, actually, it just covers the kind of detail that the things that we didn't get to know about people. But key is 
just, I know how you feel. <laughs> I felt exactly the same way. I was talking to a friend this afternoon. He said, oh my God, I'm an international traveler. I travel everywhere. Oh man, I know exactly how you feel. That's exactly how I felt. I thought that, wow, with my job and everything, I spent hours at work and do this. I would never, ever have time to do, to do this. That is really all we do. I know how you feel. I felt the same way. What has finance or, you know, people always object these things to do due to what? We know that is really two key, um, key things. Limiting self-belief about themselves or limiting belief about the industry that we are in. Those are the two major categories. So when they say these things, you know exactly that they have a limiting self-belief about themselves or about the industry that we are involved in. When you engage that, you know what to say to them next and know exactly how you feel. So, once you've been through the, you know, the, 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 I mean, I'm not going to the details of the questions themselves, we know them. So, based on what you've said, are you ready to get started? Now, this is part of that sorting that we know, we hear so much about. Because you want to get to the point where they know, they tell you which way they're falling. Are you ready to get started? Well, at that point, they might start then telling you other stories, whatever. But you will now know whether do I head in the direction of a customer or do I head in the direction of an IBO? Is this person likely to be a, a, a business, a, you know, join my team as a customer or as an IBO? We know that some will always that many people waiting in the wings. Every day is a new day. We meet new people. In fact, when I when I told my friend this afternoon that when I had a chat with him that in your travels, who do you meet every day? Well, lots of people. Guess what? Those are all potential business partners. <laughs> In your daily life. So, with that, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes my training for this afternoon. I just hope that I pricked a little bit, not even if it's not uh, so much, but just a little bit to help you get started with the next person that joins your team and get them to start thinking about what to do next and how to move their business and get them to executive team leader. So, with that, I'm going to pass it back to our uh, unless if anybody has any question, feel free to let's talk about it. And um, but in the absence of that, I will pass it back to our host for today, and that is my very good friend, Mrs. Sarah Dangare. <laughs>